ओम शांति आई वेलकम ऑल माई डियर ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स टू दिस ग्रैंड सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ द फेमिनाइन विद इन टूडे वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग द वुमेन्स डे एंड एवरी वुमेन्स डे वट आई हैव ऑब्जर्व इज द वुमेन्स डे बिकम्स मोर अबाउट ब्लेम and fixing responsibilities so sometimes women blame men about their problems and they think that man is the culprit and then sometimes the man blames the woman for her misery and they say that women should behave themselves so all this kind of blame goes on and in the brahma kumaris what we learn is taking up responsibility for our own destiny by taking up responsibility for our karma and so today we will try to understand this whole gender issue in a new light not in the conventional light where we try to fix responsibilities and shift the blame on one party or another party and i remember there was this brother who attended one conference and uh, all through the seminar what he did is he kept looking and nodding and then wondering and then at a, at the end of the seminar he came to me and said sister it was a very good lecture but i am very sorry my wife couldn't attend it so i said that's okay she will attend it whenever she is destined to attend it but i am glad that you attended the lecture and you enjoyed it then he said yes sister i attended i enjoyed but it's of no use so i said why so he said because i don't have a problem the problem is with my wife and if she doesn't attend the a uh, lecture and doesn't get it that the problem is with her then there is no solution because she is the reason why there is a problem at home i am not the reason so i said but are you suffering so he said yes i am suffering but it's not because of me it's because of her then i tried telling him that it is always because of yourself that you suffer and if you are suffering then uh, no amount of uh, blaming or no amount of anybody else trying their best to make you suffer less is going to work until you understand that you are responsible for your suffering and that you must do something to alleviate your pain or reduce your suffering so today also we will first understand how in the world conventionally we are trying to approach the gender issue so what we are trying to do is we are trying to approach it through role reversal so there is a perception that um women are at the receiving end and then they are the weaker sex and they are vulnerable and then men are powerful and they need to protect women and then they need to stop the aggression and they need to do something about alleviating the pain of women but what i feel here is and then sometimes you know women try to um, attempt at role reversal that is instead of being the victim you try to be the aggressor so um the important point that i want to raise in this regard in the scenario where there is a victim aggressor situation and the aggressor is a male and the victim is a female and then it is sometimes said that the victim is a victim because she has no financial strength or she doesn't have social strength or there is some kind of physical weakness and then the aggressor is strong and powerful and he has the money and the social privilege and that is why he is aggressing the victim but what we need to stop and ask ourselves is 
do we really feel that any person who is powerful and strong should feel the need to abuse somebody so if you are powerful and strong would you abuse somebody would you be the aggressor so the notion of power needs to be revisited here and we need to ask ourselves whether what we consider as power is actually power because if i am the aggressor and i am creating anger and i am performing an act which is causing sorrow to somebody then according to the law of karma tomorrow i will receive the fruit of whatever i am sowing and apart from the law of karma also just ask yourself one very simple question when is the last time you shouted at somebody or abused somebody or you got very angry and the next question you ask yourself is were you feeling very weak or very powerful at that time were you feeling very much in control or you felt you are out of control so or were you feeling did you feel i am in my senses or did you feel i am out of my senses so these are the questions we need to ask and when we say that the aggressor is a powerful entity and the victim is a weak entity it is not so and any person who is powerful will never perform an act out of anger or would never act out of ego or wouldn't hurt anybody or abuse anybody and if you are doing that you are anything but powerful so there is a weakness and the weakness could be the kind which manifests itself in fear and in tears or the weakness could be that which manifests itself in ego and in anger but if i am acting out of fear if i am shedding tears if i am acting out of anger or ego in all of these four cases i am causing damage to myself i am i am slowly moving towards mental illness i am slowly moving towards physical ailments because the body is responding to every thought every emotion every feeling that i am creating i am um destroying my relationships and in doing so my relationships and i are a combination and then i devoid of genuine relationships would not be that powerful or i would not consider myself a successful entity if i destroy my relationships in this manner and then of course i am creating a culture of violence or a culture of fear and that kind of a culture is not a right kind of a culture to create so just like when nowadays when we um to, to celebrate the independence day or the republic day and we think about the erstwhile glory of india so we need to think about the erstwhile glory of humanity so how humanity was very glorious and now what it has become and then we need to think about whether this approach that we are trying to reverse the roles and we are trying to stop being victims and start being aggressors because this is how we uh, we are trying to approach the gender issue and uh, we are trying to approach it or solve it through role reversal and then we are creating environments and we are calling them opportunities and saying that in these opportunities and environments women would be in a position to have economic power and social power and uh, financial power and then political power and then women will also be in a position to be the aggressor like the man so will the role reversal really solve the problem is a question we need to ask and just like we 
uh, delved upon it and came to the conclusion that it won't. So now let's try to understand the root of the issue. So there is a very good saying that no problem in the world can ever be solved with the same consciousness with which it was created. So if you want to solve a problem, you need to ch check your consciousness which is responsible for the creation of the problem. And when we are talking about the gender issue, we cannot solve the gender disparity or the gender problem by having gender consciousness. So you cannot say that a woman should keep believing she is a woman and then uh, a man should keep believing he is a man and then that issue of the gender will be resolved. Now let me try to uh, elucidate what I am trying to share here. So the first thing is when a child is born, so the child is labeled as a girl or a boy. So whenever there is childbirth and then uh, the first question that people ask is what is it? Is it a girl or a boy? So we never ask who is it because we don't know the who. We only ask what is it? And then the first introduction that we give to the to the person that has arrived is you are a girl or you are a boy and then according to the gender we try we there is a perception so we have a consciousness that this is a girl or a boy and then that consciousness is manifested in our attitude and perception so you must have read the book men are from Mars and women are from Venus. So it is in our attitude and perception that it's a man and it's, uh, it's a boy and he's come from Mars and it's a girl and she's come from Venus. And then that's how we, our perception and our attitude starts coloring the person who has arrived. So the one who has arrived is labeled and then with that label, there is a perception and an attitude which we radiate to them and that manifests in their personality. So let's look at some of the attitudes and perceptions. So there is, uh, this, there is this conditioning that women are weak. Yes, so they are referred to as the weaker sex. So, <laughs> and then you say they are vulnerable and then the man is always referred to as strong and then they are the not vulnerable group. So first you send out the message that you are weak and there is reason why you should always be in fear. And then to the man you send out that you are strong and there is reason that you can be the aggressor and then you say to the woman that there is reason you should be afraid but don't be afraid and then you tell the man that there is reason you can abuse but don't abuse so that's not how the conditioning um, would give rise to an egalitarian society so so when we start labeling individuals as boys and girls and men and women that's where the problem starts so i am not asking you to stop using these terms but while using that nomenclature the consciousness has to shift so instead of seeing anybody as a boy or a girl let's see them as uh, an individual or a soul in a female body or a male body. So this problem of gender cannot be solved by a sexual approach. It can be solved by a spiritual approach. So when we, uh, when we are trying to address this issue, let's understand that the gender consciousness 
cannot solve the gender problem. So there is no problem that can ever be solved with the same consciousness with which it is created. So gender consciousness is responsible for the gender issue. So if in the first place you start seeing somebody as weak and sending out the message that you are weak and then you start determining how much she should eat because there is a certain type of body that she has entitled to and then um, the strength and the physical um, you know dynamism is not what you expect from a girl so she is expected to look frail and feeble and the boy is expected to be strong and muscular and then you say she is weak so is she weak or is she made weak so then you stop her from climbing trees and dancing and engaging in physical activity and the boy is allowed to do that so it's not she's not inherently weak or vulnerable but she's conditioned to be weak and vulnerable so this conditioning that you are weak and vulnerable which makes her weak and vulnerable has to stop and this is where the whole problem lies so when you start seeing a person as a whole as a soul not as a piece so you are not from mars or venus you we all come from that world called the soul world and when we come and understand spiritual matters then in spirituality we understand that we are all stars encapsulated in this body and we are a soul uh, which is operating this body so when you when you see a person you tell it's a human being so what's a human being a human being is humus plus the being so humus is the body and the being is the soul so that's how we understand our spiritual identity so you are a soul in a body and then according to the knowledge that we understand in spirituality a soul is genderless so a soul is not male or female a soul is equally competent to take a female body or a male body so right now even if you are sitting in a female body or a male body you you can uh, there is a 50 50 percent chance that you could be in an opposite body in the last birth or in the next birth so you are a soul and you can take as many female bodies as you can take male bodies so we all come from that soul world and that's why this world is called a stage and we are all called actors and just like an actor can take up any costume so this body is a costume and we souls take up this costume and play our roles so we can take male bodies or female bodies or a male costume or a female costume depending on the last journey and there are other matters and factors deciding that which we can understand in detail if you undertake the Raj Yoga course but Today what I want to underline is that you are not a male or a female or a man or a woman. You are a soul and you are genderless and the body is male or female. And when we start understanding that, we understand that there is no need for differential treatment of a girl child or a boy child because you have to treat them like a soul and the soul has a body so the body needs to be fed clothed and then there is education that you have to give to either the boy child or the girl child because both are souls and both deserve fair and equal treatment so but how do you give the treatment when inherently you are seeing them in the gender and there is a social bias that you are you 
there is that is attached to the gender so first you have to uplift your consciousness above that social bias which is emerging from gender consciousness so first you raise your consciousness and try to understand that we are dealing with souls and not men or women or boys or girls we are dealing with souls and then if it this is a soul and that is a soul and there is no difference then the question of differential treatment does not arise and then nobody is weak or fair or dark or strong or anything you make them so by uh, by radiating that attitude or perception to them so these days quantum physics talks about the observer effect and then um, medicine talks about placebos and then we understand how the mind can change the reality so there is a very beautiful quotation and it is said that if you change the way you look at things the things you look at will change so when you start looking at somebody as weak they become weak when you start looking at somebody as strong they become strong but then how do you change your perception by changing your consciousness so you cannot change your perception towards a woman because if you continue to see her as a woman then your perception will stay the same but if you can start seeing her as a soul and not as a woman then the perception can change and for, with regard to ourselves let us check our perception about ourselves so do you see yourself as a spiritual entity or are you in body consciousness so if you are also perceiving yourself as weak then you are radiating to the other person the message that you are weak and then when you are radiating that message i am weak i am weak i am vulnerable come exploit me then people will take that opportunity but if you see yourself as a soul and let's understand what a soul is like a soul is made of seven qualities knowledge purity peace love happiness bliss and power so that's what a soul is made about so made out of and when you say i am a soul then you understand what is your frequency or your vibration and you understand that i am powerful i am happy i am peaceful i am loveful and when you radiate this vibration to others then they pick up on that vibration and your vibration decides how you will be treated so you don't have to tell anybody to respect you or treat you well your vibration decides how you will be treated and towards the man also if the man reeks of ego or anger then the woman feels threatened or the man is sending the signal oh i'm so oh, i might abuse you and there is then there is a discord in the energy and then the right message is not reaching but if the ma the soul in the male body also understands i am a soul and then they radiate the energy of love purity peace and power then no man will be suspected upon and no man will be um will be labeled as an aggressor or an abuser so we are living in an age where soft power is being um discussed uh, in the political spheres and we are talking about the power of spirituality and values and culture and we understand that this world needs power so we are all weak these days and we are trying to cover our weakness with the veils of anger and ego but basically what we need to do is do away with the veils and go strong so just like i talked about earlier that 
a man a uh, soul in a male body is not necessarily strong and it's not out of strength that they get angry or egoistic it's it's because of weakness and when you are strong enough then you would not mind being loveful and accepting and respectful and happy and blissful and you would not have to tell anybody or signal anybody that please be scared of me or stay away from me or i might hurt you because you are not vulnerable so it is the vulnerable who send out these kind of signals so it is not strength that makes us abusive it is weakness that makes us abusive so when we start seeing ourselves as soul and as, as a soul and as powerful peaceful loveful happy blissful then we are all in our own personal power and then we behave ourselves and then we don't need to tell other people to behave themselves so you know just like when a person has a wound then what they do is they tie a bandage around it and they want uh, that bandage to be so visible that other people understand that they need to be careful around you so anger and ego is like that bandage and a weak soul ties that bandage on itself and then you move signaling that stay away from me i might hurt you or basically it is i might get hurt but then you send out the signal i might hurt you and so people stay away because if they came near and they rubbed you in the wrong places then you will get hurt so this is what we are signaling to the world and why we are trying to threaten each other or we are trying to send out the signal of stay away from me or i'm dangerous or i am very i'm an angry person or i might get irritated or you might rub me the wrong way is because if they did whatever they like to do then we would get very hurt or we would not have the power of tolerance to tolerate it so it's not that uh, souls in male bodies are strong and female bodies they are weak no both of us are weak because souls as it is are running on, on empty right now because we have performed a long journey and just like you see everything in nature is depleted these days all the five elements are depleted these days because of the law of entropy similarly the souls in human bodies are also depleted because we have also taken many births and any energy in motion depletes itself so we have also performed a long journey taken birth after birth after birth and that's why we have depleted ourselves so now in understanding the soul uh, the topic is celebrating the feminine within so first thing understanding that i am a soul and then the second thing that we need to understand today is a soul is a balance of male and female energy and that is why in the shastras we have this these symbols of vishnu which is a combination of lakshmi and narayan with four hands so it's not one person with four hands it's uh shri lakshmi and shri narayan combined together or we have the symbol of the ardha narishwar where there is half shankar and half parvati or there is the symbol of the yin and yang which is half light and half dark so when we are talking about the soul we are talking about this wholesome energy which is a combination of the masculine and the feminine and they i would like to remind you that when we say masculine i am not talking about anger or ego because that is neither masculine nor feminine that is not energy that is the negative of energy that is when you have no energy then you have anger or ego just like Uh, anger ego lust attachment and greed 
which are termed as the vices, they are like darkness. So darkness prevails when there is absence of light. So when the male and female powers of the soul get eroded, then we are moving with these crutches of lust, anger, ego, attachment and greed. And these are not powers, these are the lack of powers. But when I am talking about the soul and the soul as a synergy of male and female energies, then what am I trying to say? Let's understand. So A, you start perceiving as yourself as a whole being. You are not a piece, you are not weak, you are a soul, you are whole. And then when you see yourself as a whole, not as a piece, so you are not a half looking for the better half, you are a whole. And if you meet somebody, it will be one plus one eleven, not uh, not half and half one. <laughs> so you can uh, work with people, but they are not supposed to complete you. You are complete in yourself. The Any soul is complete in itself and you are not, uh, you don't need a man or a woman to complete you. You are a soul and that's just a body we take. And there is power that we need right now, but that power won't come from the man or the woman. That power comes from God. And this is why spirituality emphasizes so much on meditation. Because when we say meditation in Hindi, meditation is called yoga. And yoga means plus. Yoga means addition. Yoga means connection. So connection with whom? Connection with the Almighty. So you are a soul, you are weak right now and any weak soul is not going to complete you. You can cooperate with the soul but do not expect them to complete you. So they, they, we are competing with each other because we want, we and or we are trying to emphasize that you are meant to complete me. So we don't have to expect the other person to complete me or to compete with me or I don't have to compete with them. There is only one relationship between everybody on the planet that we share and that is love and cooperation. And whatever I need as a soul, I, as a weak soul, if I want to fill myself and recharge myself, that has to be done, done through meditation or connection with the Almighty. And when we connect with the Almighty, then we come into balance between our individual male and female qualities. So what are the male and female qualities of the soul or how do we strike a balance? So we are basically uh, trying to talk about internal integration or spiritually spiritual integration if we want a social integration. So integration is not a outside in process. So integration won't happen outside and get reflected inside. Integration in, is an inside out process. So what you do is you try to integrate yourself from within. The masculine and the feminine inside the soul have to get integrated. And you see, this balance is missing in most cases. That is why people are aiming for perfection outside. So let's take some examples of the balance that we need to strike within. The first balance is the balance between love and law or love and discipline. So uh, let's say somebody is very loveful and somebody is very stern and very straightforward and very lawful. But there has to be a balance between love and law. So let's take the connection between a parent and a child in this case. And then if you are too loveful, that is, you are so loveful that the love is bordering on attachment and then you stop 
giving structure to the child that is you stop defining boundaries for the child and the child grows in an environment where there is no structure no law then you are doing more harm than good to the child and this is what we are seeing these days so what is happening is in the world we are raising children in such a manner that they have very low adversity quotient because we have raised them in an environment of unconditional love and a total acceptance which is stemming from attachment and our own weakness to tolerate any pain that the child undergoes and then we forget to provide the structure to the child where they learn to build resilience and tolerance and when they have to go out into the world and face challenges then they fail badly and that is why in the last one year there was a lot of talk that aq is the new quotient new important quotient and earlier people talked about intelligence quotient and emotional quotient and spiritual quotient but these days people are talking about adversity quotient so how do you build the adversity quotient by extending to the other person a combination of love and law so there has to be acceptance there has to be respect there has to be understanding and care and belonging which are aspects of love but there has to be discipline and law also because a child needs a structure to grow and in the absence of these this synergy this combination of the masculine and the feminine energy of law and love what happens is the growth is lopsided and then you see if i do not have a combination or if i am not a full soul what happens is if i have only love that i then i confine my role to one area where only lovefulness will do and i try to go to the extreme in that area or if i am a very lawful person then and i don't have any love then i go and explore the extremes of those areas which require only law and not love but then even when people reach the pinnacle of success in the areas that they are good at they often complain that they are not happy or they not they do not feel accomplished or they do not feel that they have achieved a lot or they do not feel they are successful because any success which is based on one aspect uh, taken to the extreme and achieved perfect perfection and the other aspect totally neglected will not give a fulfilled life so the first combination is the combination of love and law here we are talking about masculine and fem feminine synergy within within the self so i am a soul and i have to achieve that synergy within myself so the balance between love and law within myself so i have to radiate the energy of love to everyone because love connects and when you want to connect with the soul with nature with and the environment with the trees plants with work with anything you need energy and that energy of love connects you to the world around you and also connects you to yourself but then you need law also so you also need to understand where to draw the line and where to put in your uh, put your foot down or where you need to um devise a structure and not become a doormat or not start taking anybody else for granted or not making them uh, a par uh, not becoming a parasite and not making them somebody you are parasiting upon so these things have to be taken into consideration then i will talk only about some balances today but there are lots of them so the second balance today i will talk about is the balance between self esteem and regard for others so there has to be balance between respecting others and having self esteem so when i say self esteem 
it's not about um, that self-esteem which the ego is often shrouded as. So sometimes you see, we say my self-esteem was hurt, but self-esteem can never be hurt because self-esteem is your esteem for yourself and nobody has the power to hurt that. So what is self-esteem? Knowing yourself as a respectable, as a valuable, as a worthy, as a powerful and as a loving being. So you should have, you should know your worth. And whenever you are dealing with the world, then be situated in your self-worth. So if anybody doesn't see you as you are, you don't stop seeing yourself as you are. So you know who you are and you see yourself as you are, come what may. That is self-esteem. And then there is regard. So you have to extend that respect or that regard to everyone around you, whether it is people, things, elements of nature, anybody. The, but we have to give regard to everybody and be seated in my self-esteem. Sometimes what happens is we think that I will give regard to this person and then they should give regard back to me. But if you give regard and then you sit like a beggar and keep waiting that they should give you regard in return and they decide not to, then you feel hurt. So first give regard to yourself, be full of self-worth, self-value and self-esteem and then extend regard to others. And even if it is not reciprocated, doesn't matter. You are a giver of regard, that's your nature. So give regard while staying in self-esteem. Give help, but stay in self-help. So not give help and be a beggar of help. You can either be a beggar or a giver, you can't be both. But these days we act like being givers but actually we are beggars behind that and then no sooner than we give we start expecting so this is the second thing about self-esteem and regard and the third balance is of humility and authority so one has to have a balance between humility and authority humility doesn't mean that you are a doormat and people can walk over you so you have your authority, that is, you know who you are and you know how to treat yourself well. And when you are in that space or in that stage of authority, then you radiate the vibration that you are valuable and that you are in a position of authority. And that authority need not be given to you by other people or it may not be a thing about the position you hold or it may not be about the role you have been assigned. It is an authority that you are the child of God. And as a child of God, as a child of God, as a knower and practitioner of spirituality, you are a spiritual authority. And then having humility because the trait of a soul is humility. So just like a tree laden with fruit is always humble and giving and, uh, you know, always uh, stoop low. Similarly, we, so, we souls full of authority, full of virtues, having the gifts of spirituality given by God himself are full of humility and we know how to respect other people. So that is the balance between authority and humility. So these are the balances between masculine and female, feminine energy within the soul. Then the fourth one I would like to take up is the balance between contentment and ambition. So um, you are a soul and you are on the stage. So in the beginning of the session, I mentioned that we come from that home called the soul world and this is a stage and we are actors so we are on the stage and we need to act so an actor has to act 
without acting that is not an actor so you are a soul with a role so you have to have the sense the sensibility the sense of responsibility and the zeal and enthusiasm to play a good role in this world drama so you must treat yourself as a good actor and have the ambition to manifest the gifts given to you by god so if you have intelligence if you have skills if you have virtues then they need to be put into action so they need to be manifested as something some creative work in the world and that is the ambition that every soul should have and you are a soul and you are on the karam kshetra so this world stage is called the karm kshetra and we are all karm yogis and we have to work we have to have ambition so uh, we we sisters in the brahma kumaris we wear white and we look like we are ascetics but then we are also karm yogis and all through the day we are working and we are trying to create a better world so every soul needs to have regard for their endowments as spiritual energies and then using those endowments in creating a better world is the ambition that everybody should have and they should contribute um as much as they can and in the manner they can so that is about ambition and then there has to be a balance of contentment with ambition because you have to you have to create you have to contribute but second by second you don't have to do it with that energy of emptiness so there are two approaches to life one is i have to do this i have to get this and then i'll be contented and the second thing is second by second i have to be anchored in my personal virtue of contentment so every soul is by design a contented soul and virtue uh, contentment is a virtue that every soul is born with so let me just be mindful of my virtue of contentment while treading the path of ambition so this is the balance between the feminine and the masculine energy inside the soul and then there is a fifth balance that i would talk about and that is the balance between acceptance and effort so you know there are um, there are people who come up and ask me whether <laughs> everything is predestined or whether there is free will so what i say is that the, there is free will but the free will is not very free so there are always there is a combination of acceptance and effort that has to work so let's say that you are in an in a place and then there is water available so you have to go and make effort to drink that water and you have to also have acceptance about the kind of water that is available so maybe that place you are in is a little um it has a little more con mineral content in the water so you have to have acceptance also and effort also so whatever is possible has to be achieved through effort but the impossible has to be accepted so in every setting there will be some things that are possible and some things that are not possible and the not possible has to be accepted and the possible has to be made effort uh, to achieved so there is a very beautiful saying uh, it's uh, there is this uh, prayer in a religion and that prayer says God please grant me the serenity to accept that which i cannot change the courage to change that which i can and the wisdom to know, know the difference so wisdom means knowing what you can change and what you can't change and whatever can be achieved needs effort because there is nothing that can be achieved without effort 
and then there will always be some things which cannot be achieved or changed and those have to be accepted so this is what we mean by the balance between male and female energies inside the soul so every soul has to strive to become a balanced individual and how do you do that through meditation and the simple um, definition of meditation or the simple procedure or the underlying principle of meditation is whatever you pay attention to grows so if you sit in moments of silence and pay attention to yourself and look at yourself not as the body which has a gender but as the genderless entity the soul which is sitting behind the eyes and operating this body and then if you start seeing yourself as a balanced complete energy and having the power to accept and make effort to be contented and work hard at the same time and to be loveful and lawful at the same time if you start perceiving yourselves like that and taking out time to do this exercise every day then sooner not later but very soon you will start seeing that you are a whole soul and then you don't need to put anybody down to ensure your self-worth or you don't need to beg anybody to respect you in order to have self-respect so i will finish here and let's have two minutes of a small meditation and the meditation will be on the lines that i just discussed so two minutes of silence and i will speak out certain lines and please allow your thoughts to be guided by those sentences Sit very still and quiet. And very gently, very slowly, unplug your attention from wherever it is anchored and bring it to your body. Become aware of the body sitting on the chair. This is my body. My body has a gender, an age, a race, caste, nationality, religion. But I am not my body. Very slowly move your attention upwards in the body. Take it to the eyes. and let it pierce through the center of the eye reach that place behind the eyes where you the soul sit you are a star of light see yourself a tiny subtle star absolutely genderless ageless casteless no religion no nationality your pure light 
the light of power and peace. Just let your attention rest on yourself. Look at yourself as a being of power and peace. Continue to do so as long as you can. Om Shanti.